This episode has been brought to you by our super generous supporters on Patreon. Today, an asteroid the size of a house moving nine times faster than a bullet will fly by Earth at a distance closer than the moon. Yikes town. Although the asteroid poses no threat, NASA's been watching it closely ever since it was discovered. They're using its close proximity to test their newly established planetary defense network. It's a global network of government agencies, observatories, academic institutions, and amateur astronomers. And they're all that stand between us and an asteroid impact. But could NASA actually defend us against an approaching asteroid? Good Stuff producer Matt Weber finds out. Asteroid 2012 TC4 is passing by Earth right now. It's about the size of a house, but if you looked up at the night sky, you wouldn't be able to see it. It is invisible to the naked eye. Asteroid 2012 TC4 isn't gonna hit the Earth. It'll miss by about 40,000 kilometers, a close shave by astronomical standards, but far enough that we don't need to be worried. After all, an asteroid that size hits the Earth about every 60 years. It's truly a once-in-a-lifetime event. But a similar-sized rock slammed into the atmosphere near the Russian city of Chelyabinsk just four years ago. It burned up before ever reaching the ground, producing a fireball brighter than the sun. It could be seen for hundreds of kilometers and exploded with the force of an atomic bomb. You what? The shockwave broke windows, damaging over 7,000 buildings, and injuring over 1,000 people. And no one saw it coming. Granted, it's exceedingly hard to spot these objects. Space is big, and these rocks are tiny in comparison. But to survey such a large section of the sky for tiny, dark, practically invisible lumps of rock is a huge undertaking, one that cannot be tackled by a single person or even a single institution. If the need to defend the planet from an oncoming asteroid ever became apparent, it would require the efforts of telescopes all around the world from multiple nations, requiring the expertise of people from all kinds of backgrounds and disciplines. That's where NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office comes in. In order to spot these rocks, we need eyes on the sky all around the globe. That means using ground and space-based telescopes from a variety of institutions, not just NASA. The Planetary Defense Coordination Office is responsible for detecting, cataloging, and tracking near-Earth objects. And if any appear to be a threat to the Earth, the Planetary Defense Coordination Office would organize the effort to mitigate or stop a space rock from impacting the Earth. At this very moment, there are over a thousand potentially hazardous objects hanging over our heads. To clinch the distinguished title of potentially hazardous, an asteroid must be on a trajectory that could someday put it on a collision course with Earth and be big enough to cause some damage. That usually means somewhere above 100 meters in diameter, larger than a football field. An asteroid that size only hits the Earth on average every few thousand years, but when they do, they can cause as much destruction as a thermonuclear weapon. In 1908, an object of this size hit Siberia near the Stony Tunguska River. It leveled 2,000 square kilometers of forest and knocked people off their feet hundreds of kilometers away. Luckily, the impact occurred in a mostly uninhabited area of the planet. The victims were mostly trees. If it had hit closer to a city, the destruction would have been catastrophic. Again, no one saw this coming. No one was even looking at the time. Since the detection and deflection of an oncoming hazardous asteroid would require the coordinated effort of so many disparate governments and institutions, we can't wait for one on a collision course to suddenly appear. By then, it would be far too late. So as this house-sized boulder crosses the sky at 14 kilometers per second, NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office will be conducting a practice run of what it would do if it ever had to deal with an oncoming asteroid. The first step would be to detect the object. Since 1998, NASA has made it their goal to catalog at least 90% of the asteroids and comets close enough and large enough to threaten the planet. That means the rocks that across the Earth's orbit and are one kilometer or larger. An impact event with a rock that size would be a global catastrophe unlike anything ever experienced in recorded history. The fallout from such an event would wreak havoc on global ecosystems, leading to mass extinctions, possibly our own. In the time since NASA began cataloging these space rocks, Astronomers have met and exceeded that goal, but that doesn't mean they are done. There are still many rocks out there waiting to be discovered, and with the ones they have discovered, their orbits need to be calculated and refined. This requires constant observation. The more they can observe an asteroid, the greater they can refine its orbit, and knowing its orbit is the only way we can know if it's on a collision course. NASA, along with partners around the world, have been monitoring today's asteroid since its detection in 2012. With each observation, they've been able to fine-tune their understanding of its size and trajectory, giving a 
better picture of just where exactly it will be today. Early observations of an object's orbit are only able to give the probability of an impact. As more observations are made and the object's orbit is better understood, the probability of impact will either increase or decrease. Usually after constant monitoring and further observations, the probability of impact shrinks to zero. But sometimes that doesn't happen. In 2008, a car-sized meteor was spotted by the Catalina Sky Survey Telescope. Astronomers there determined that it was on a collision course with the Earth and correctly predicted the location and time of its impact. Since the rock was only the size of an Oldsmobile, it didn't pose a threat and it burned up in the atmosphere. We have two scales we use when assessing the threat of an asteroid impact, the Torino Scale and the Palermo Technical Impact Hazard Scale. The Torino Scale is simpler and meant for communication with the public. It uses a scale from 0 to 10 based on the probability that an object will hit and the size of the object. 0 means the object is small and basically has no chance of hitting the Earth. A 10 will almost certainly hit the Earth and it is big enough to inflict global disaster. The Palermo Scale is more complicated but it essentially measures the same thing. In 2004, the asteroid Apophis set the record for highest risk assessment on both the Palermo and Torino scales. For a brief period, Apophis held a 4 value on the Torino scale and a 1.10 value on the Palermo, meaning it was 12.6 times more likely than average to impact the Earth in the year 2029. But further observations ruled out the chance of impact. But if Apophis had continued on its collision course, the Planetary Defense Coordination Office would have to start thinking about deflection efforts. This has never happened before. But NASA and researchers around the world have put a lot of thought into how you would stop a mountain-sized rock moving faster than a bullet. First of all, you can't really stop it. A rock that size just has too much mass and too much momentum to be completely stopped. But you can nudge it, and that might be enough. The Earth is moving about 30 kilometers a second in its orbit around the Sun. That means it moves its entire width through space in about seven minutes. If an asteroid headed on a collision course were delayed or advanced by seven minutes, it would miss the Earth entirely. The simplest and cheapest method would be to launch missiles at the object. These could be nuclear bombs or merely a bunch of cannonballs thrown in the asteroid's path. Either way, the goal would be to impart enough kinetic energy into the object to slow it down just enough that it would be late for its scheduled impact with the Earth. Nuclear weapons are the most familiar method of asteroid deflection because they are always used in the movies. But nukes aren't the only way, and they're not necessarily the best way to deflect an asteroid. And in some ways, nukes may be one of the more boring ways to save the Earth from an oncoming asteroid. For instance, you could ram a gigantic spacecraft into it. In 2005, NASA crashed a space probe into the comet Temple 1 on purpose dubbed Deep Impact. The intended mission was to study the interior composition of the comet, but the impact altered the comet's orbit by around 10 meters. A relatively modest change, but the Deep Impact mission serves as a proof of concept that we could nudge an asteroid out of the way just by crashing into it. Or you could attach conventional rocket engines to the object and turn it into a massive, incredibly slow-moving spaceship. But that only really works if the object is a mass of solid material. Many asteroids might just be big conglomerations of loose rock. Basically, basically piles of rubble left over from the birth of the solar system. Bombing such an object might disrupt the pile, but not change its trajectory much. So nuclear weapons are off the table. And it would be hard to affix rocket engines to what is essentially a big floating pile of gravel. But we wouldn't necessarily need to come into contact with the object to move it. A spacecraft could be put in orbit around the object, whether it's solid or not. The gravitational attraction between the craft and the asteroid would slowly push the asteroid into another course. This is called a gravity tractor. It would be very slow, requiring years, even decades, to alter an asteroid's trajectory enough to make it harmless. Given enough lead time, though, seemingly small alterations in the object's orbit could lead to big changes down the line. For instance, painting an asteroid bright white might be enough to change its orbit. The white paint job would increase the sun's reflective radiation pressure on it, effectively pushing the asteroid onto a new course using sunlight alone. Or you could paint it black, making it absorb more of the sun's energy and using the increased emission of thermal radiation to move an entire mountain of rock. Or you could just deflect it with a cloud. Putting a cloud of water vapor in the path of the asteroid might provide just enough friction to slow the object down and make it miss the Earth. But these kinder, gentler forms of deflecting an asteroid depend on early detection. We need decades of advanced warning. That means we need as many eyes on the sky as possible, all the way from the big telescopes, like the aptly named Very Large Telescope in the Atacama Desert, to amateur astronomers in their backyards. 
In the time since the Tunguska event, we've become increasingly aware of the interplanetary shooting gallery that the Earth exists within. Evidence of great impacts in the past scar the surface of our planet, and as our surveillance of the sky grows, the more potentially hazardous objects we become aware of. Despite the ever-increasing number of potentially hazardous objects, the odds of being hit by one on any given day are extremely small. But one thing is certain, one day we will be hit by an asteroid or a comet. Without a concerted and coordinated effort to detect and track these objects, we have no way of knowing for sure when. But if a dangerous asteroid were detected tomorrow, we'd have nothing ready to stop it. All the ideas I just talked about are just that, ideas, relegated to academic papers and intellectual exercises. It could take years, even decades, to get these ideas out of the realm of theory and into space. That's why for now, observation is key. It is currently our only line of defense. We need to be able to detect them long before they become a danger. NASA's Planetary Defense Office is a young agency. It was only established in January of 2016. Today will be its first test. Like the orbit of a newly discovered asteroid, the outcome is uncertain. Asteroid 2012 TC4 is small, dark, and moving at incredible speeds. Needless to say, the odds are against them, but each asteroid that comes within reach of our telescopes gives us another chance to refine our techniques, reduce the uncertainty of our projections, and increase our odds. So what do you think? Will we be able to protect ourselves against an asteroid, or should we even worry about falling rocks from the sky? And what would you do if we knew an asteroid were approaching? Apocalypse times. Let us know in the comments. Special thanks to our Patreon subscribers for making this episode of The Good Stuff possible. Without you, this just would not happen. So, if you like what we do here, consider heading over to our Patreon page and supporting the show. Thanks for watching.